We heard squad cars. We saw them coming up from behind us, coming from the side. Kat noted the exact location. We're just over the Macomb County line from Wayne County. I asked her if there's anything else remarkable about that stretch of highway. It is a darker corner. It is a darker little less lit up area of the freeway because it's on a bend. It's on an exit right here. It's like a dream, a bad dream that we want to wake up from. Taya's big sister, Dejanae Bridget, says all she feels is numbness. I mean, to be standing outside of a Taco Bell because they didn't slaughter your little sister. All lanes of eastbound I-94 were closed at Vernier after a woman's body was found on the freeway. Around 7.45 a.m. on October 14th, Michigan State Police would find the body of a female along eastbound I-94 between 8 Mile and 9 Mile Roads in St. Clair Shores and Macomb County with what appeared to be a gunshot wound to the head. We're looking at right now an investigation going on into a fatal accident involving a woman. Michigan State Police said that there was a dead woman found on I-94 who suffered from head trauma. Now, obviously, we don't know exactly the details or how she got there. It does not appear to be involved in a car accident. The woman may have walked down the embankment and then got onto the freeway. Again, that's speculation, but that appears to be what happened based on the fact that the Michigan State Police and their canine unit has been all over the embankment as well as all over I-94. Initially, police weren't sure of the identity of the young woman. After six hours of searching for evidence, the body was identified as that of a 17-year-old girl by the name of Taya Land. Initially, police suggested that she died from trauma to the head after being hit by a car. But after an autopsy, it was determined that she in fact suffered three gunshots to the head fired from a 9mm handgun. Police believe she was shot to death around 3.45 a.m. when a shots fired call came in near I-94 and 8 Mile Road. Troopers arrived on the scene and discovered her body on the side of a freeway a few hours later. 17-year-old Taya Lynn was a sweet, young girl and the mother of a one-year-old baby girl who was the center of her universe. She loved her child, her family, and had an extremely close relationship with her father, whom she lived with prior to her death. The two bonded over their love for music. Taya was a talented trombone player in the band at Fisher Magnet Upper Academy, where she was a self-taught musician. She had her entire life ahead of her. Initially, Michigan State Police had no leads in the case, and they, along with Taya's family, urged the public to come forward with any information leading to an arrest. Days later, there were still no details surrounding her death. Her family, along with the Michigan State Police, were left with two questions. Who and why would someone want to harm Taya? What really happened that morning on I-94? Taya's family is angry, shocked, and devastated. Her father had so many plans and dreams for her, and all of that was taken away. As they looked for understanding in her senseless and untimely murder, they continued to pray for justice and answers. At the center of Taya Land's universe was her daughter, just one year old, and had mom wrapped around her finger. She loved her child. She loved her family. She was very close to our father. She was great. Taya was living with her dad, Jody Taylor, before her death. They shared a special bond over music. He says Taya was a talented trombone player in the band at Upper Fisher Academy. Did no, you teach her? No. You didn't teach her? No. She, just, she picked it up on the jeans. Yeah. She picked up, played herself. On October 14th, all three of their lives were changed forever. Chopper 7 video from that day shows Michigan State Police scouring the area of eastbound I-94 near 8 Mile in St. Clair Shores. Don't know why somebody threw her on the freeway like that after they shot her like that, so we don't know why. So we're looking forward to answers, too. And we definitely want justice. Roughly a week after the discovery of her body, Michigan State Police would announce the arrest of two suspects in the case, but one was soon released. It's a relief, but yes. it doesn't bring us any justice right now because we want to know why. Yes. Why did you do it? What made you do this to her? For the first time, we are hearing from the family of 17-year-old Taya Land. Last Friday, the unthinkable, a teen found shot to death, her body dumped on I-94 in St. Clair Shores. The family in disbelief when they were told it was their Taya, the mother of a one-year-old girl living with her father on the city's west side. 
a homebody. She was just a typical teenage girl. Taya's dad got up last Friday. Taya's baby was home. Taya was not. Something was wrong. Her family says they know of no trouble with anyone in her life. And the thing is, she was 17, but she didn't look like she was 17. She looked like she was probably 13 or 14. We don't know if she might have stepped outside and maybe someone called her and lured her out. We don't know. And that's what we're hoping to find out what happened, what led up to it. Today, MSP raiding two locations in Southfield, taking more than one person into custody. But who and why? Even though they have someone in custody, if anyone knows anything else that can help, please don't be afraid to speak out. Just think of it as your daughter, your sister, your cousin. Please don't be afraid. Just speak out. The remaining suspect, identified as 20-year-old Nathaniel Taylor of Southfield, was arraigned on Friday, October 21st, on two charges in connection with the death of 17-year-old Taylor Land, one count of second-degree murder, and one count of felony firearm. During the arraignment hearing, Michigan State Police said they used cell phone data to link Taylor to Taya's murder. Police also said that Taylor picked Taya up before she was found dead and estimated that she was shot around 3.45 a.m. Taylor admitted to investigators that he fired three shots, killing Taya. Prosecutors say the two had a personal relationship, but the exact nature of their relationship was still unknown. The Macomb County Prosecutor's Office says they believe the suspect and Taya met on an app. It is alleged that the two got into an argument while in the car and that the suspect pushed Taya out of his vehicle and shot her three times. This man um, shot this 17-year-old child three times in the head, Your Honor. As a judge charges Nathaniel Taylor with second-degree murder and felony firearm. We do believe that a $2 million bond, Your Honor, would secure his, um, the safety of the, of the people, Your Honor. MSP stands on the shoulder of East I-94 near 8 Mile, piecing together what happened to Taya Land. In court, a MSP detective explains how cell phone data, GPS records, and video surveillance links Nathaniel Taylor to Taya's murder. It's alleged the two first met on an app, and he picked her up around 3.20 in the morning. Mr. Taylor traveled from his residence in the area of Southfield, across over to Edmore Street in Detroit, uh, pick up Ms. Taylor, Travel around for a couple of minutes before getting on eastbound I-94 on your 8 mile. Macomb County Prosecutor's Office says the two got into an alleged argument and Nathaniel pushed Taya out his vehicle and shot her. GPS data shows he stopped on the freeway for about four minutes. The 9 millimeter gun used was found in pieces at Nathaniel's home in Southfield. His brother also has several firearms at his home and also um, helped take part in discarding the additional portions of the gun yarn that we are still looking for. Taya's one-year-old daughter is now with family who says they would help raise her. They want people to remember Taya as a good mom who didn't do anything to deserve her fate. A GoFundMe was created to raise money for Taya's unexpected funeral expenses. 20-year-old Nathaniel Taylor is being held on a $2 million bond with no 10% due to him being a possible threat to public safety. He is required to wear a GPS tether if released and is expected to appear in court on October 28th. The investigation remains ongoing. Counsel, good morning to you. Uh, Mr. Taylor, could you state your name for the record? Mr. Taylor. And Counsel, could you state your name for the record? No, I'm Jerry, Assistant Public Defender on behalf of Mr. Taylor. And, uh, Madam Assistant Prosecutor, your name for the record? Good morning, Your Honor. Thank you. Stephanie Stager on behalf of the people. P660199, nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Counselor, uh, Mr. Taylor is here for the purpose, <clears throat> excuse me, of arraignment. Uh, will you be waiving a formal reading of the information or did you want the court to restate the uh, complaint? Uh, we'll waive the formal reading of charges, Stan Mead, Your Honor. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Taylor, you understand that I'm entering a plea of not guilty on your behalf based upon uh, your attorney's representations. You understand you have certain rights. You have the absolute right to remain silent. Anything you say or write can and will be used against you. You have the right to have an attorney represent you like you have here today. If you couldn't afford one, I would get you one. And you're asking for the, are you asking for the continued use of a court appointed attorney or are you gonna get your own? I'm asking for a court appointed attorney at this time. All right, I'll have a court appointed attorney here for you at the next court date, which is gonna be for the purpose of a probable cause conference. 
Um, that will take place one week from today on October the 28th. It's going to be at 9 a.m. before Judge Oster. And the preliminary examination, if necessary, will take place on November the 11th. Oh, I apologize. What's that date? November the 7th. That's going to be at 1 o'clock. In regard to the uh, bond conditions pending that next hearing, let's hear from defense counsel first and we'll let the prosecution reply. Uh, Judge, with regards to bonds, um, at this point, can we just hold off on that until the next hearing? Well, I have to issue some type of bond. Um, unless, uh, Very well. You're stipulating to I understand, Your Honor. Um, in that case, I mean, I understand the nature of charges are quite serious. Um, I haven't really discussed uh, what financial means Mr. Um, Taylor might have, but I would suggest a bond of 250000 cash charity 10%, um, and, and I'd leave it at that. At this point, I don't really have the facts of the case, so I, I don't think I can advocate more effectively, but I think $250,000 is enough to um, both secure the safety of the community and, and I don't think it's a wide risk. He has family in the area and he's here, so he has family, uh, his, his mother and brother live here in the area, so um, he knows he can't. You can't go too far. Looks like there is um, one outstanding warrant for unlawful discharge of a firearm out of Southfield as well. <clears throat> What's the people's position? Thank you, Judge. The people are asking for a two million two million dollar cash surety bond only, Judge. No ten percent. We would also be asking for a GPS tether and house arrest. I know people are extremely concerned for the safety of the community. This man um, shot this seventeen year old child three times in the head, Your Honor. Um, he, as the court has just pointed out, also has a current warrant for reckless discharge of a firearm. When the police went to his home in Southfield on Wednesday to execute a search warrant, they found him in possession of yet another firearm and also pieces of the murder weapon as well, too. His mother had a registered gun in her name that was also at the home. His brother also has several firearms at his home and also um, helped take part in discarding the additional portions of the gun runner that we are still looking for. We do believe that a $2 million bond runner would secure his, um, the safety of the, of the people, Your Honor, and we do believe that that would be a proper bond at this time. Thank you. Well, based upon the severity of these allegations and as well the uh, prior bench warrant that was open in the very close proximity to this particular crime, the court feels that the recommendation from the prosecution is a fair one and will secure the safety of the, uh, the community and also secure the return of the defendant. Bond is too late and cash early only. GPS tethered prior to release. We'll see you back here on October 28th. Thank That's you, all for today. Thank you, Judge.